What's up everybody, Power Stroke Jude here. Hope all my dudes are having a great day. Working on a six liter Power Stroke today. You know, one of my favorite things to work on. Uh, I don't put a lot of videos of me working on vehicles out because usually i um, got so much work on the weekend that you know, I don't have time to film. I gotta, I gotta get stuff done. But this is the only job I have lined up for today. So I figured it's an easy job too. I'm removing a turbo and reinstalling a new turbo on a six liter diesel. So I figured I'd walk you guys through it. So let's see. Uh, first thing you're gonna wanna do, you know, is you're gonna wanna take out your air filter. I just put a short out on an easy way to take out the air filter. So this is already, you know, kind of ready to come out. But you can go watch that video if you wanna see how to do that. But you know, get your air filter out. Air filter out. <clears throat> Quick and easy, man. Fastest air filter removal, removal ever. And uh, button this up out of your way. I'm gonna do that and I'll show you it when it comes back up right now. Give me a second. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is, I got my quarter inch ratchet. Uh, what you would usually have to do, this one's broken, guys. If you can come zoom in right here. Uh, this duct that goes to the turbo off the air filter, pull it out of the valve cover. Uh, because if that's it does have the o-ring, the o-ring's all swelled up. We should probably replace that. And there's two tens on this. You see those? Um, take those off, loosen this eight, and then this would come up. But I don't need to take that out because you know this is this is broken. We can replace that, or it's not really going to do too much damage. For now, we're going to be okay just taking that out. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And always have a tray to put your, your loose hardware. Uh, give me one quick second. I'll get some tools organized and I'll show you what I do next. Guys, next I'm going to... I don't know what this wire is to. Do you know, Blaine? Yeah, this goes to the uh, power steps. Okay, so it's for the power steps. So they routed it here. But I'm going to get that off. Then I'm going to take these out, these panel clips. Put them all in the tray. Careful not to break them. You know these six liters are these six. The truck six liters are now what 15 years old. If, if it's a 2007, they're 15 years old. And you know, add a year to every year under 2007 that it is. So these are a lot of times real brittle. You know, the old and just got to be careful. You don't break the plastic. We just did well right now. We didn't break any of it. Careful when we drop the tool. If you don't have a panel popper, if you can get a screwdriver underneath underneath one of these clips and just get it up a little bit, then you can get a pair of needle nose pliers underneath it and squeeze and pop. That works pretty well, pretty easy too. Get this harness out, pull it up over the cowl for the for the degas bottle. Get this aftermarket one out as well. This is tight to the C. And then we're just gonna need a small zip tie. So give me one quick second to get a, not a zip tie, a bungee cord. So I pulled the cowl out, I got it out of the way, and I use the little pocket screwdriver inside the top of the cowl, and it kind of holds it in place. You can use the bungee cord to the, to the bottom of the wiper if you want to as well, that works too. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off uh, this charge air cooler. Then we're gonna disconnect the harness and we're gonna take off the oil feed to the turbo. Uh, what I noticed real quick is if you zoom in here is this harness is already broken and it looks like it's held on with silicone. So we're gonna have to uh, uh, be, uh, be aware of that when we go back together so that way it's not, it doesn't come loose. We'll have to make sure we uh, secure it properly. So let me get uh, an 11 deep and we'll be on our way. All right, so to take the charge air cooler off, you need a deep 11. These boots are, are Held on with the clamps that are 11 mil the charge air cooler bolts on both sides and all the clamps on the turbo they're all 11. take off one right there and i'm gonna have to get a different tool for the next one all right and if you look at the boot on the bottom there's two there's one on the at the back of the boot and then there's one on the charge air cooler itself always do the charge air cooler. i know people always do the one on the charge air cooler I know there's people who do the one uh, at the boot, but not. It's a lot easier if you 
just do the one on the charger cord. Pull it out, twist it off, put it off, get your parts. All right, now I'm taking off the feed line for the turbo. You know, there's a little clip here for the clamp. Disconnect that. Now, I was talking to you guys earlier about this being held on with silicone. As you can see, there's supposed to be a little tab here that locks onto this, to that hook. And the same thing on the other side, these are both broken. So we're gonna probably have to silicone it back or zip tie it back up. But as long as you know when you take it apart, what you gotta do to put it back together. If I would have seen that coming in, I have, uh, old 7.3 injector harnesses that have that same exact clip and I would have I would have brought one to replace it Next I'm gonna take off the feed line to the turbo and I'm gonna use a ratcheting 10 if you don't have a, you I'm gonna show you that both work You can use. oh actually this one doesn't it's broken. I found that it was broken today. I think it is let's see But if you don't have a Ratcheting 10 there's other ways to get in there. Hey, you see it cracked it but rack, uh, uh, wobble works too, if you want to get on the back. There's two. And once you crack these loose, you can run them off by your fingers. They're pretty pretty simple. Let me see. I'm, I know I'm blocking. It's hard for me to do it with my right hand. But you can trust that I'm taking all. Well, you see two bolts. When I take my hand away, they'll be gone. <laughs> Sorry about that. If you don't have a tray to put your, your hardware in, I've done these many times. This stuff comes off dry, it's not wet, it's not gonna break anything. But this is almost perfect. You know, you can separate stuff in on both sides. The other side, don't put real small stuff in because it's great and it's empty, but you know, so now that's out of the way. I'm going to see about taking it out. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I'll show you how to do it. There's an eight millimeter nut or bolt straight down. Take that out, get that out of the way. Set your tools aside and now you can pop this out. Sometimes it pops out easy, sometimes it doesn't. There it goes. We're gonna replace that O-ring too. It come, it's a O-ring that comes in the kit. And now, I'm, give me one second, I'll be right back. All right, now I'm gonna hit the clamp with, that I'm gonna take off next with a little bit of WD, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna to go to the other side and get the other clamp that's in the back. Uh, probably can't see this one as well, maybe on this side. Can you see the clamp? Yeah. All right, there. you'll see me just hit it with a little tab of WD. It just loosens it, you know, because that way it helps you out when you're taking it apart later. Now, if you, oh, I'm sorry, Blake. Now there's three, besides the clamps, there's three fasteners that mount the turbo to the turbo pedestal. They're 10 millimeter fasteners. I'm gonna use my a ratcheting flex head 10. There's multiple ways to get this one off, but you do need, uh, it helps if you have a ratcheting tool. You get that on there, you crack it loose. You're gonna hear a crack right now. Oh, maybe not, but once it's loose, just like the other ones, if you can see it, you can pretty much get it by hand after that. I believe the turbo does come with all new fasteners. If you have an early turbo, 03, 04, it'll probably come with spacers as well. The spacers are about as thick as the head of the, of the ratchet, of the, of the, about as thick as the head of this, of the bolt, but it goes underneath the bolt because it doesn't need all that room. All right, so I got that one off. I, um, I'm gonna get the one on the back side now. Go on the side. All right, so you saw that bolt that I was just focusing on. That's also a 10. Get your 10 millimeter swivel ratchet on there. If you don't have a 10 millimeter uh, swivel ratchet, you can sometimes 
get a long extension with the with the wobble 10 uh, but sometimes you got to take off the thickum and stuff to get more access to it but with the 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench you just heard it crack loose and once it cracks loose it's all by hand nice and easy Big shout out to my dude, Joey Preciado. He's got a six liter. Uh, someday he's gonna need a turbo on it. And hopefully with this video, he won't stress out when he has to do it. He'll just knock it out of the park. All right. All right, next we're gonna take off this clamp right here. Uh, you can see it facing the back of the, or towards the firewall. I'm gonna take it off right now. When I put it back on, I'm gonna turn it around. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's just gonna make the next person that does this, it's gonna make their life a whole lot easier. It's a lot easier to, to get it off, but I'm gonna, it's an 11 millimeter. I'm gonna get my my ratchet back there, take it off with an electric ratchet, or you can do, if, before I had ra electric, I used to do this with air all the time. So you'll figure it out, but yeah, it, it's not that bad. When you get these clamps off, tap on them with a little hammer, you know, and it'll break the, the You've got some WD on them, you tap on them with a little hammer, it'll break them loose and you'll be cool. So let me, uh... all right, now I'm going to take this clamp off. And this one, I probably don't need the extension, but we're replacing this clamp as well because this clamp was over tightened in the past, over tightened in the past. So if you can see where my finger's at in the back, you see that lane? Mm -hmm. You see the bend, how this is forming, they're like forming a circle or like going down. It's supposed, you'll see the new one, it's gonna be flat. When you take those off, when you put them back on, don't over tighten them. That's the other thing when the clamp is when it's bent like that the bolt doesn't come off so you got to take the the bolt actually is supposed to just slide in and out i'll show you guys on the new one so now i got to take the nut all the way off so that way i can get the clamp over the, the ridge that should be enough there we go you'll see what i mean right now when i show you See how this comes out and I got it off. Now it came out, but this is what I was talking about right here. The bend right here, you don't want you don't want to do that. Because then it makes it sometimes hard. When this is all the way in, it was fighting me. You see how it doesn't even want to go back in? It didn't want to come back out. So usually it'll just pop in and pop out. Alright. Alright, so now you can see this is the new clamp that we got. You can see the difference in how. This one was over torqued, so it stretched it out and bent it in. Now this one, see how it just pops in and out? That's why I, had, I, I wouldn't, all I would have to do if I was taking this one off is loosen the bolt to where it's at now and it pops out. This one, I had to take the bolt all the way off to get the nut out from here. Oh, part number, let me hold this up. Part number for this clamp is... All right, I'm back, I'm getting now. I take the last, uh, you saw me take out the first two bolts that mount the turbo to the pedestal. I'm gonna take off the last one now. You can probably get air back there or cordless back there, but I usually break it off by hand. And I figure why not, you know, break in a brand new ratchet that I just picked up off the Cornwall truck. Uh, it's their brand new 120 tooth. I got this from Gabe. Uh, everyone knows I like hard handles, but how can I pass that up? Look at that. Yeah, did I spend too much money for it? Probably, but oh, what are you gonna do? But anyways, to get that last bolt off, um, I always use 3 8 ratchet, uh, 6 inch extension, and a 10 millimeter. This happens to be a snap on mid. It doesn't have to be a mid, it could be a shallow. Deep's probably a little bit too long. But now this is all going to be by touch. So I'm, I'm going to pause the video or stop the video. Then I'm going to take a picture of the bolt that we're doing and I'm going to insert that bolt at, to, as to where we're at so you can know how to take that one off. 
All right, now you can see, uh, all you see is my socket, but I got a six inch, six, six inch extension uh, with that cornwall ratchet and um, you heard it crack and I'm breaking it loose. Now it's loose. Now I can do it pretty much by hand. So let me take my ratchet out. Once it's loose, it's like I said, all of these fasteners are hand, hand tight. Uh, if you look at the for service manual, maybe because it's exhaust, oh, that wasn't quite hand tight. Let me put that back on. But if you look at the service manual, uh, when you're going back together, it tells you to use uh, anti seize, or should I say never seize? Who says never seize? Put it in the comments. There's a real popular YouTuber that says never sees. <laughs> but there we go. So I jumped the gun just by a hair by taking my ratchet off. But all right, so I got my my setup to take it off. That's a, a three inch or two and a half inch, uh, three eighths extension, a deep eleven millimeter socket. And whatever tool you're going to be using i'm using the 3 8 tool right now i would typically use a quarter inch just because it's a little bit smaller but i already got it set up and on there now you can see the clamp where it's at so what i'm going to do this clamp looks like it's in, in better shape than the other one so i'm just going to hold the back of the clamp so it doesn't pop out while i'm spinning so i'm spinning it out and then i'm gonna take it off there you go perfectly right there just see right there you'll see it coming out Now, I bought the hammer to, to loosen the clamps, but sometimes just the vibration of the tool will, will make it so you don't need the hammer on it. All right, it's all the way off, so now be careful that you don't lose your, your nut. So make sure your nut's in your tool. You see it? <laughs> and you can pull out the... The bolt which is gonna come up relatively easy now this one is a little bit stuck so got my hammer now oh let's see what's this what's this thing yeah it's a tire weight okay real weight uh, I'm gonna try to hammer I usually use a, a little metal bulping hammer but there you, go. you hear that snap sometimes what I gotta do is put a something on it. I know I'm on the side that's already off, but sometimes these are hard, sometimes they're easy. And you just want some vibration to get it off. I think I should have done it. Okay, now there's one more piece left. I got the top and the bottom off. Now it's just it sticks. I got the top, both right and left side. Sometimes the back side sticks just a hair. Get your striking pry bar. This one happens to be an old snap on. Hammer on it. Hopefully that did it. All right, now let me get a little bit of more WD on it. Give me a sec. Right, so. Sometimes these fight you guys. Other times they pop right off. Would have been a perfect time to demo my brand new nine inch snap on striker that I just got from Roscoe. But no, as always, you always forget something when you work, <laughs> don't work at home. I think I got it. Oh yeah, it's loose now. So now you don't even gotta, what you gotta do from there is pull it off. 
I'm gonna bring it out with the turbo. You can see the gap right there in the from the Y pipe to the to the turbo. It was mated properly. I mean, there's a little bit of a gap, but it's mated properly. That's how they go. Uh, come on to the other side, Blaine. Now you just get this little hook off of your downpipe. You see it? It's awfully tight in there. Downpipe's off. I don't know why, they, but you see the separation in your downpipe. Now you just get, uh, make sure you don't get the harness. Just get the, the intake manifold right here underneath the top, underneath the intake housing on the turbo. And you pop this thing up and the turbo is out. So I'll, we'll also talk about going in, but I mean, without stopping, what would you say? If, if not stop, 25 minutes tops. So we stopped a little bit here. We messed, and this gave us, you know, took us three minutes instead of one. But, you know, that's how it goes. Look, if you want to see the inside of the turbo, you see all the pitting right here? And something went through, and it's causing the impeller to break and fold. Not much play in it, but that might be enough to cause it to chip. But yeah, I'll show, we'll show you the brand new turbo too, too. All right, old turbo, new turbo. A few minor differences, you know, in the way they uh, updated it, the way it's it's built, but essentially it's all the same thing. But you can see what was wrong with this one. Look at the impellers. You see where it's all beat up, where it's all chopped up. If you look at the, something was hitting here. And you can see it's all pitted. If you look at the brand new one, Nice and spanking clean, perfect, perfectly good turbo. We get a still shot of this. Part number for the new turbo. Turbo does come with a VGT solenoid. Uh, it comes with the clip for the harness, and it also comes There's with the hardware right here. Oh, it has the, the hardware kit. It's got the the gasket for the top of the turbo, the O-ring for the feed tube, the two turbos for the drain. Three fasteners, and it also comes with the shield. Back in the day, we used to have to replace the shield, the VGT, this clip. There was a lot of different things we used to have to do. But, all right, let's get this thing back on. All right, we're going to go back together now. We got the, the turbo oil drain and the turbo feed tube. I replaced both, uh, all three O-rings on them. I'm going to replace the, the bolt on here, too. I lubed them up with a little bit. I know it says brake lube, but it's a silicone. You know, it's a... Uh, uh, lubricant so lube those up put them back in this one's not going in just yet but it's coming back up on the truck so I'll get it out of the way so you want to get these tabs right here they go over over this and if you look you just got to follow it the drain tube is gonna see it like this and the o-ring part you're gonna see the hole in the high pressure oil pump cover just play with it a little bit till it goes in it wants to sit around here that's about how it sits we got to set the turbo so yeah you'll set the turbo on and we'll fasten it back up all right check it out when you, before you go back together and put the turbo on uh, on the bottom there's a blue cap that goes right there take it out so you're not fighting with it forget don't forget that it's on there you know they have caps on here caps look like this uh, when you take this one comes off of the exhaust housing side of it you see all the oil that comes in it so make sure you have a rag to wipe up the oil so it doesn't drip off catch your oil in here save these caps they're good when you're capping stuff off if you're smoke testing later uh disconnect your wire to your alternator or cover up your alternator real good with some rags that way you, i mean it's got a shielding on the on the the harness but uh you never know you don't want to arc you know, watch my blooper reel later. But now here it goes putting the turbo on. You want to put the exhaust housing uh, facing the back. 
your white pipes gonna face your white pipe action to get, just gotta get it to set on the turbo okay once you're in you can see how I'm not quite on the you see this you can still see the o-ring for the turbo drain tube so that's what you want to set the turbo on and you got to be careful because I, I might do it now I mean it, it happens all the time when you're trying to set it you're gonna pull the drain tube out from the high pressure oil pump cover so just make sure try to do it smooth so that way it doesn't pull out and it mounts mounts right All right, guys, I just said it. It was hard for me, a little bit harder than I thought. I mean, it took me probably, what, my third try, would you say, Lane? Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, drain tube fought me a little bit. But you want to make sure we check with the oh, with the mirror. You, I'm going to show you my view. That's the, if you can focus on the mirror on here, guys. You see where the mirror sits into the, the housing for the turbo? That's the center housing. You don't want to see any yellow O-ring. The O-ring is, is seated inside of the turbo. And then you look at this dowel pin right here. Oh, I'll use this as a pointer. That dowel pin, you can see the cutout for the dowel on the pedestal. And there's the same thing on the other side. We're gonna press pause real quick. And you can see the dowel pin right there. I'm using the, the mirror as a, a pointer. It, it's set in its spot as well. You can see that the white pipe is mated to the turbo. I mean, we'll close that gap a tiny bit with the before we go back together. And on the back side, oh, sorry. On the back side, the the downpipe is also mated to the turbo. So now we're back together. Now we just got to fasten it with a few bolts. And you saw how little bolts that were used to fasten it. But I'll show you guys what we're doing as we go. Right, guys, we're back. I'm excuse me, putting the turbo back together. I've got it back on. Um, you saw. The clamp, you saw the fasteners, they're all hand tight now, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna zap on the, the fasteners. Look at the clamp right here. If you see, now I've got it on and I've got the, the nut facing me. Oh. That would have been hooked. So that hooked. Now, now what I got is with the nut facing me, you, you can see how easy it is to Get your socket on there, hold the back so it doesn't pop out, and snap it tight. Right, torque. <laughs> and now look how easy that is to get off too. If anyone ever has to get it, get it off, all they gotta do is get their 11, the deep 11, with the, and they're on there. Made that way easier than having to fight with it in the back. So that one's on. And also, be, make sure you start your your fasteners to your turbo before before you zap these tight. I'm gonna get the other side now. So now this side, just get your eleven, get your clamp. This one this is the clamp that we're replacing. All right, tight. You don't want to go too tight. Notice I did not bend my. My, my tabs, oh, we did uh, trick tabs of the trade that first plus. All right guys, uh, this turbo's back together. Um, don't mind this, I'm gonna do a video on it right now, but the last thing I did, I mean, you didn't have to see, you saw it come apart, but I put the charger cooler boot back on. There's an 11 here and 11 here with the clamps. I put the ducting to the air filter back on, you know, uh, an eight right here. 
an eight right here. You gotta get your mass airflow sensor. I still gotta put the oil filter cap in. We're gonna actually get an oil cap, but the oil filter dipstick. We're probably gonna get a, get a new dipstick because you can see where it's broken and the plastic pieces right here. Um, get your degas bottle line back up. It's got a couple of eights. Put all your clips for your harness. Remember, if you have an aftermarket harness and you're not familiar with it, just remember how it went when you, when you brought it back off. And this truck is back together. This I put. Uh, I did not take this one off, so I wasn't worried about that. But that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's how. This is how Power Stroke Jude uh, R and R is and replaces the turbo. Not a how-to. How Power Stroke Jude does it. So remember that if you take one off and it explodes on you. But anyways, please remember, like, comment, share, subscribe, ring that bell. Until next time, keep on keeping on. Power Stroke Jude, out.